Okay. Hello, welcome. So this is Wit, um, and I'm Ray, if you are new to this channel. Wit, hi, hello. welcome. Hello, We've hello. We've never had Wit on this channel before, so you may not know her. You want to go ahead and just introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Wit. Um, I am, oh my goodness, what can I say about myself? Well, I'm currently residing in Minneapolis, Minnesota, <laughs> but who knows for how long. If anyone knows a Sagittarius, we know we can't stay put for too long. Um, mm -hmm. And who I am, this is one of those things, this is actually a deeper question than a lot of people think, because I don't like to put too many labels, especially when it comes to like spirituality and am I a healer? Am I an activator? Am I a, like, mm -hmm. I just like to say I am like all the things. And then I'm just remembering what all the things are. Um, mm -hmm. But activator is the one that like rings most true right now in my life. The one that is at the forefront, the one that I'm doing the most. And so for the past couple of years, I've had my own business where I empower entrepreneurs to like grow their business in a like playful way, but also in a very um, conscious way. It's like building it from your heart space instead of like directly from your mind only. Mm -hmm. But then also I work with people and use play to activate them and to empower them to step into their creative power. So, so yeah, I do a lot of different things, but that's just a little bit of who I am. I love that. I love that because I love how you said who I am right now is like activator, right? And that's so, that's very relatable. I definitely go through those same phases where I'm like, you know, who I am now is a channel and I'm very focused on channeling. And then, you know, it shifts because who we are changes. Yes. Right. And it's so who funny because anytime you're filling out a bio for a social media platform, it's like, say, tell you, tell people about yourself. And I'm like, can I just put emojis? Like, I just want to put, because that's like means so many different things. And I don't know if I want to like hold on to a specific word for too long. So yeah, wow. totally. Yes. I love that. You're not limiting yourself. You're allowing yourself to just be in flow and be authentically you. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And I don't want to put it out to the universe that I'm not open to other things. Right. Like if I cling to an identity or I cling to an idea am I not allowing myself to be open to other things so that's another piece of it too is the language like I want to be very intentional about what I'm putting out there <laughs> yeah you know I had this thought the other day I'm like you know <sighs> okay so you know how okay so the whole concept of accepting all that is right? Accepting all that is. And the whole concept of when you start to know more, you realize that you really know nothing, right? So then I kind of got to this existential place of like, well, what if I just don't know who I am? What if I literally have no idea who I am? Mm. I guess that's okay. Like, I just, you know, <laughs> I'm just coming to terms with like, it's, I don't have to know who I am to be here and experience this this place and experience emotions and make new connections. Like, I don't have to know who I am to do any of those things. So we don't need to get hung up on that. You know, yeah. we need to get, yes. don't, let it, don't let it get in the way. Don't let it become a, a stumbling block. Right. Right. And I, and I can say I have let it get in the way before. <laughs> so <laughs> <Or> have I. <laughs> I have so been so wrapped up in like, what is my mission or what is my title? What is my thing? And, and I was realizing that was keeping me from making moves. It was keeping me from creating and building and doing. And then I started thinking about it as this is a big playground and I'm just going to go have fun and enjoy it. And ultimately I've found like when I am pursuing joy and what I'm most excited about, then that's where everything about, you know, who I am, what I'm discovering about myself falls into place. So yeah. That's the mindset shift that I did to get to go from like, oh my God, who am I? What am I doing here? To like, let's just have fun. Let's just have yeah. a good time here. <laughs> and through having fun, you've still been able to have a career and have steady income and work with people and right. Yes. Yes. And I think I, we talked about this off offline or whatever, but just for people 
listening, like I literally for 2023 manifested getting paid to play. Like I, I did a whole vision board on it. I like meditated on it, this whole thing. And I was like, I love being joyful. I love being goofy. I love sparking that in other people. I would love to create abundance for myself by doing that. And like the minute I kind of put that into motion and I started making moves, like baby steps towards it, things have just been like coming in where I get to do those things. I'm like, this is amazing. (laughs) Wow. Look at you. Just like a walking, talking example of (laughs) manifestation through joy. I love it. (laughs) And, you know, I've talked about this a lot Um, over the years is that we have to feel and embody the thing that we want to attract or the thing that we want to achieve. So almost like fake it till you make it, but in a non-toxic way, it's more like act as if, act as if, if you feel that you are a healer and you want to be paid for your healing gifts and you want that to be your source of income, act as if you are already a boss healer who's making money and has a clientele and has your books filled if that's what you want. I mean, that's a huge part of it. And joy is like the high, one of the highest frequencies of feelings we can feel, which helps the manifestation process, like, um, be more smooth. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if there's any doubt or there's any like doubt about what we're feeling and it's mixed in with the joy, you know, that's kind of when manifestations, it's like, you might get half of what you wanted or something. And you're like, huh, that's kind of what I wanted, sort of, you know? Yep. Totally. Totally. And like, I mean, this is set all the internet. I'm not going to say anything new here, but like the whole releasing how it comes in. Cause that was my, that was a big holdup for me. I'd be like, I envision it coming this way and exactly this way. And so I was just looking for that. And then I was blocking it because it was coming in at me in so many different ways. And I just like, wasn't seeing it. So yeah, yeah, that was, that was a huge piece of my learning, which I'm still, I'm still learning that piece. Anytime I put something out and I'm like, okay, well, this is what I'm, manifesting for my day to day. And then I find myself thinking, okay, it's going to come in this form. Wit, stop. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> How long have you been working for yourself? Um, so it's been since the pandemic, the beginning of the pandemic. That was, I mean, that was a huge shakeup for a lot of people. Right. Um, and for me, I, at that point in my life, I took a brief hiatus from working in the entrepreneur space and I was working in Mm -hmm. uh, a university setting. And I was Mm -hmm. like, I don't enjoy this. There is so much red tape. There is so much, this is how we've always done it. Language is not who I am. That is not, I like building Mm -hmm. and creating and expanding what's possible. Um, And so, yeah, then I just, while I was still working full-time there, I started my business on the side and I already had a ton of contacts that I'd worked with for like 13 years in entrepreneur, small business space. And I just kind of let them know, I'm like, Hey, I'm doing this thing. And, and I had left a good enough impression that they, like, I didn't even really have to market myself. They were all like, yep, I want to work with you. Or they sent my name to someone else or whatever. It just kind of snowballed. So within, I think, six months or so, I ended up being able to leave my full-time job. So. And what, what retail or what type of job were you doing before? So that I was at like a university, like university of Minnesota was like that bigger um, kind of organization that I was working for. And it was like a brief pit stop. Well, it was supposed to be a brief pit stop. I was, you know, I started working there and then I was, um, quickly realized it wasn't for me pandemic hit and I was like "Mm, maybe I shouldn't jump to a new new job right when this is all going down so then I just started building my own business while I was still doing this thing I didn't like right 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 I I can't remember what you said you were doing at the same time I'm like university so like office type yeah I was managing uh one of the apartments on campus so I was like yeah, one of the apartments for for students who live on campus. I was managing the apartment complex. Well, it only took you six months. That's that's pretty incredible. Yeah, I I mean, 
it's so funny because people are like, whoa, that's, that's fast. And I honestly think I literally was, I was building that business years and years, a decade before then, because I was making all those connections. I was having those experiences, all that stuff. And that is what I tell a lot of the people I work with. I'm like, look back to the experiences that you've been having for so long that you, that you bring you joy, that bring you so much excitement that you haven't thought to maybe put more time and energy into in a different way. And so, yeah, yeah, like technically six months for my own business name, but like a decade of like making connections, having experiences, all that stuff. Right. And that's one thing to keep in mind. Like whenever we're making a shift or we're like focusing on being like, I want to be my most authentic self. And I I really want to pursue this, you know, this path of joy or, or whatnot remember that nothing you've done so far has been wasted. None of your time has been wasted. None of your jobs or skills that you've gained over the years are going to be wasted. Your new endeavor, whatever it may be, will incorporate all of, all of your skills. Mm -hmm. That's because you know, when you're, a lot of times we feel unfulfilled when we're doing something where we're not being utilized to our full potential. So your dream job or dream career or project that you're wanting to experience or just life experience that you're wanting to have it's going to incorporate the best parts of your past and the best parts of you that haven't been uncovered yet right Mm. so just keep that in mind like it's not like you're going to be just on this whole new thing and you have no skills and you don't know right. what you're, doing and you're just lost in the wilderness. It's not going to be like that. <laughs> not at all. Like it's, no. it's, it's meant to flow. It's meant yeah. to flow. Yes. It's, it's, it's way more connected than, than I originally thought. Like had I not had that exact experience all the way through, I would have been thinking similarly like, oh, how do I do this from scratch? Well, it's not from scratch. It's literally a lifetime of like building this up. So yeah, that that's my most fun thing. When, when the people I work with that, that clicks for them and they make that connection, they're like, Oh, I've been doing this just in a different setting forever. I'm like, yeah, (laughs) yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, and, and it's fun to look back and see the paths that we've taken and then see how it all led to where you are now right like for example I was just in so many different retail type jobs um and I even did cosmetics you know so makeup so art even though I I I've always considered myself an artist but I've never really drawn or painted so that was kind of my way of expressing art through color and shading and whatnot but Um, as I've gotten here now, um, starting my own thing, you know, I started right when COVID started, I got laid off and I was kind of trying to start my own thing, but I was focused more on holistic healing through massage therapy because I was still in massage therapy school. And then I just realized that that was much too taxing on my body and the energy work was uh, more fulfilling for me anyway. So I kind of just started focusing on that. But my point is, is that now I'm incorporating, like, for example, making my own website, right? Like I used to work in T-Mobile and Verizon. So I used to work in the tech a little bit and that kind of yeah. helped me as I've been creating my own website and, and just like the makeup artistry skills and stuff, all of that helped me with, I don't know, that didn't really, that was just fun for me. I don't know if I really gained anything from that. I was already good at that. It wasn't like a new skill. Like I already knew what I was doing, you know, from the beginning. Yeah. But yeah. um, the point is, is like all of those little things that maybe I wouldn't have gained elsewhere are benefiting me now. And at the time I was just like, oh God, I hate this job. Like, <laughs> when can I move on to the next thing? And, but it was all worth it. Like yeah. now, now I can see that it was all yep. worth it. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's what, that's, Yeah similar to my experience too, where there were certain, even working with some of the entrepreneurs and small business I work with, I'm like, this doesn't feel really aligned for me, but I'm drawn to this for some reason for at least a year or two. I don't know why. And then, yeah, 
years later, I'm like, that's why, because I'm using yeah. that thing that I learned at that one weird wonky job now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's really just about trusting. And it always comes back to that, right? Just trusting, trusting that you're on the right path now and that you have been, it's mm -hmm. not like you fucked up even when we do fuck up and, and make choices that cause harm or cause us to go off the most direct path to what we want that's still it doesn't not really a fuck up because I'm certain there are things you gained along the way yes right I am notorious oh. for walking upstream <laughs> instead of like going with the this has just been kind of what I'm doing this lifetime I'm like okay just like strong arming my way through this <laughs> and, and someone will point out well what if you just allowed it to flow and I'm like oh yeah I guess I could do that like hmm but in like, those what? moments but in those moments I learned so many things I mean the biggest lesson for me is now I know what it feels like when I start to strong arm again when I start to fight against flow I'm like oh no 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 wait take a step back breathe take just take your time like you don't need to that feeling that you're feeling is so so in you at this point because you've done it so many times it's so much easier for me to pick up on it so I don't do it for very long <laughs> yeah knowing what it feels like that's so huge and I'm sure so many people can relate to being that kid that like wants to do it themselves like I was that mm -hmm. kid I want to do it don't do it for me yep um, do it yep yeah. Oh, yeah. as, as souls, like we're here to experience. And if someone just tells you about an experience, that's not the same thing as experiencing it yourself. And I feel that the labels of what's bad experience and what's good, if when we just throw that out the window, who says we're not allowed to walk upstream? Who says? Exactly. Just because it's more natural to go downstream doesn't mean that, or it's less resistant doesn't mean that there's not amazing benefit from walking upstream right. and even if it's uncomfortable it, the fact that you're enjoying it and having fun and experiencing something new like that's what makes it you know <laughs> yes 100 percent, 100 percent. and like my upstream or someone else's upstream might be to me like the most in flow it's like all about perspective in my opinion that's why like the thing that's been coming through a lot for me recently, um, well, within the past like couple months, is when I'm watching someone that I that I to me looks like they're struggling, and I'm like, oh gosh, if only they would do it like this way, they could have like a simpler, easier, more flowy life. And then I'm like, wait, I like take a step back, and I'm like, they are actively choosing to do those things. I trust that they are having the experience that they want to have right now, and that has like change the way I view how people make decisions, how I make decisions. That's a big um, one. Trusting yeah. that other people know what they're doing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Cause like you're obvious, I'm obviously looking at it through my own perspective, through my own experiences. And I'm like, oh God, this could be so much easier for you. But I'm like, wait, don't rob them of their own experience. Like just allow them to be. <laughs> oh, baby Yoda. <laughs> Grogu. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Like allow them to just be. And it's also a huge weight lifted that it's not our responsibility to monitor how someone else is living their life. Like I grew up thinking that it was, I was taught that it was my responsibility. And so, you know, unconditioning our brains takes time and, and repetition uh, but let's all just let that weight be lifted. Like they get to choose what they want. And if that's, they're choosing that, you know, maybe they don't even know they're choosing it, but they are. And it's not our job to come in as the hero and like rescue them or whatever. <clears throat> right. I think it's like, I mean, this is talked about a lot, how we're moving into sovereignty, even more into sovereignty and like and a part of that is your own, but a part of that is also allowing others <laughs> that sovereignty as well. And so it's, yeah, it's just, it'll take some time maybe, but I think um, that's definitely the shift that I feel very largely in myself is allowing for myself to feel like just because everyone I know is going down this path and choosing that path, like me making decision for myself 
outside of all of that is absolutely valid and okay. <laughs> totally. And, you know, talking about sovereignty brings us to um, something I want to talk about. Um, so as you know, um, everyone has their own ex paranormal experiences to varying degrees. And it's not, has nothing to do with how old your soul is <laughs> or how it literally is just some, it's due to contracts, really contracts and contracts is why all of us are allowed to see and perceive different things and have different experiences in this life. So, um, I bring this up because I love hearing people's stories about near death experiences or just paranormal things they they see their guides or ets or um i don't like to talk a lot about ghosts unless they're like i like to talk about the positive experience yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, even if they were scary it's not like you you know you can still talk to me about any of them like i am interested in even like abduction ones too like scary sure. ones but I don't like to stay in a fear state, you know? So if yeah. you want to tell the story in order to transmute it, if that's why you want to tell the story, then I'm totally down. Totally. Um, <laughs> but we're not fear mongering here. No, okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> so interestingly enough, I uh, made, made a contract in this life that I would be with not withheld but i guess i wouldn't be able to physically perceive with my eyes paranormal things with my physical eyes like wow. i i was raised in religion and and i knew i could sense demonic things but i could never see one i never saw one you know and then i got older and to this day i still haven't seen my ets my guides any of ufos i haven't seen any of it but I have absolutely believed in those things from a young age, just as a knowing, just a knowing. Yeah. It wasn't like I researched it or, or ever heard about it. But if you asked me as a kid, if I believed in aliens, I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Like, what, yeah. what do you mean? Of course they're real. Like, so Wit, I think has some ex cool little experiences she uh, might want to share, but it's just so interesting to, um the way you know i withheld this from my because if i would have had all my gifts because i already have a lot of other gifts right psychic abilities so mm -hmm. if i would also have that third site i wouldn't even need to connect with anyone and i would just not even i feel like i wouldn't interact with people as much because mm -hmm. i'm like oh you know it all i don't need to talk to anyone right I, right I, so it's like I kind of had to limit myself so that I'd be forced to like rely on others for their sight like I need you all to tell me what you're seeing I can't do it without you yep. so yeah. yeah I love it, it makes wow. me forcing me into this like yes so <laughs> yeah that's so cool oh gosh where to begin where to begin I might um, take notes I might take some notes <laughs> <laughs> do it do what you got to do um, I think the one that sticks out for me most is like early on in my remembering more, I guess, aware remembering, because I feel like I've been on this journey for a while, um, following my intuition, doing things that like outside of what, what anyone in my life was telling me to do and just had gut feelings. So I feel like I've been on that journey for a while, but as far as like seeing things with my physical eyes and then having it a spiritual experience connected to it that's within the past couple of years um and the one that sticks out to me the most right now is uh around my uh two of my like spirit guides that's the way that i understood it at the time um i don't know if i'm super big on putting labels on all these things because it is they're just there helping me so whatever um well, spirit guide, i feel like it's the most general neutral term yeah <laughs> yeah 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 um but I was actually like attempting to I had like gone to a few um workshop sessions and stuff like that early on and I was just 
I was like, oh, I know people who can like see their guides and like all this stuff. And like, I want, I want that experience. And I had my little pendulum and I was like trying to figure stuff out. And I was so frustrated and like threw my pendulum on the ground. I was like, okay, fine. I just like, I just got so frustrated. And in that frustration, it, I was then stepping into what I now know was more of an allowance and like taking my brake off or taking my foot off uh, the gas almost. It was like less pressure. I didn't know that at the time, but that's what I was doing. And so then literally like 12 hours after I did that, I had a moment as I was coming out of sleep. So I was like kind of in this theta brainwave state, I believe it's like meditative slash grogginess. I ended up seeing like I was in my bed and I saw two of my spirit guides like chilling kind of like up near my ceiling. And I was like, okay, this is not third eye. Like I am physically like I like waved. I was like, hey, and I wasn't scared. I was like totally just like chilling. And but they were giving me message also third eye wise. So like First, I will say their names were George and Ellen. Those were the names that I was given. George. You know, just I feel like it was very, very like, what can we tell her that won't freak her out? We're also going to come to her as very like human looking things. Well, imagine like if you were from somewhere else and you wanted to show yourself to your earthling you'd pick a human name. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like now I understand these are probably like ET guides, um, of some kind. Um, but I saw them in like this human form, uh, George, I still, to this day, I like, I never drew it out, but to this day, like reddish hair, balding on top, yellow button up. He very specifically mentioned, he wasn't talking outwardly. It was like a telepathic thing um that was going on he was telling me that he was going to assist me with my job my my business because I just started that and so he's like I'm here to help with that he also like had a phone he was like on the phone like he's I think basically trying to show me that like that's what he's there for he's there to like help me in that way and Ellen was very much uh kind of more free flowy like she looked like a yoga instructor like had flowy clothes on and then she was mainly just showing me where she's from. Um, and I use this example when I talk about this is like, you think about where Luke Skywalker lived um, on Tatooine or whatever with the bubble houses, yeah. but it was more like a uh, cylinder-ish kind of looking. So not exactly a circle, but it was like kind of, a, I don't know, like a cone head looking thing. Um, and I was like, and then I was looking at the sky and the sky was like really purpley pink. And I was like, this is not earth, but I didn't know it at the time. Like when she showed me that I was like, oh, that's an interesting place. Didn't even occur to me that that's not here. Right. I was just like, oh, wow. Thanks for showing me that. <laughs> so I was obviously like taking in what I was able to take in at the time. Um, and then, yeah, so it was like, they were there. We had this exchange. I, I don't know how long it lasted. And then they were gone. But I just remember being super excited. I, I let them know I was super excited to see them. They let me know that they were super excited to see me. And then they kind of said a few things and then and then we're gone. But, um, and I haven't seen them like that since. Um, like I've called upon them in meditation and connected with them in various ways. Um, but I haven't physically with my eyes seen them that way. Oh my goodness. There is a butterfly pillow on your couch. There is. Yes, there is. <clears throat> yes. Um, wow. So, <laughs> so did you fall asleep after or did you wake up after? I was, so I was right before that. It was like, you know, right as you're waking up, you're just kind of a little groggy, whatever. So I was like opening my eyes slowly. And then that's when I saw them. So then I was very alert. Like right after that exchange happened, I was like, whoa. And I had like, was talking with a few different friends and stuff at the time about how frustrated I was. And that was 12 hours before I was like, oh, I just like threw my pendulum down. And then I literally texted them right after. I was like, you will never believe what just happened. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like, uh, so excited. Um, so yeah, it was, it felt very, um, comforting. Like nothing about it was scary, even though it was like two beings in my room, like chilling. Yeah, yeah. It was cool. So as far as your other abilities go, like, were you kind of born with really good intuition, just kind of turn awake a little bit, or did you gradually kind of tap into those? So I would say my, like, following my gut, that part of my intuition, following the path that, that I meant to be on as far as like what I want to experience and not listening to other people that has always been very much intact from a young age. I was doing things and following different direction um, than my peers from a pretty young age. There was a period of time, and this is common, like you, you can relate to this, the whole religious aspect that kind of stifled that for a while for me, um, where I was kind of looking to pastors and religious leaders for guidance. And then I was feeling this conflict of like, well, I, my gut is saying this, but you're saying this. And so I, there was like conflict there. And so I was confused for a while. Um, but I mean, from like outside of high school. So in my twenties, I mean, I like moved across the country multiple times with suitcases, not having like a place to live, not knowing people in these places, not anything, not a job. And just being like, I feel like I'm supposed to be in California now and just went like wow. just followed my instinct in my in my intuition in my gut I'm supposed to be over there found a place to live found a job found people to like connect with and all that stuff so are you religious there. Anymore? what now are you religious anymore I'm not religious anymore no I um I don't have anything necessarily like I went through a phase of being very angry and you know, I can't remember if YouTube loves swearing. So I'll just say F religion, whatever, just, just very, very, very angry. Um, and to the, now I'm just at this point where I'm like, again, going back to the trust, if the people that are having that experience, I'm, I'm choosing to believe that they are making the choice because they want that experience. And, um, and they also have the choice to leave that experience if they want. Um, and so yeah, I personally don't like, I'm not like um, tied into any sort of religion at this point. Um, but I also believe there's like fractals of tr truth in a lot of different religions and spiritualities. And I don't think like anyone has all of the answers. <laughs> um, it's all kind of, I feel like it's all kind of like little breadcrumbs all over the place is kind of how I when see it. When did you leave the church? I left, oh gosh, I left, that would have been maybe 2006, 2006 or seven. I was in college at the time and I started off my college career being still in it and going to Bible studies and all that stuff. And then being like, wait a minute, I don't know if I buy any of this anymore. And then, yeah, haven't really, haven't really jumped back in, at least not the way I have. Like I, if uh, someone I care about is, is into it in some way and they want me to attend something with them, I will a lot of respect uh, if I'm feeling okay with it at the time, but I'm not, um, I'm not going to get great insight necessarily I'm just there to have an experience with someone I care about and that's it right yeah yeah interesting yeah so I left the church as well um in college around college right while well, I was in the church in bible college and right after that is when I left um it's just interesting to talk to different people about their experiences like how they left why they left kind of what prompted you to because for me I know that I, I was kind of like investigating in, into the main core beliefs of the Christians. Like, okay, so the main belief is that Jesus died for our sins and was raised from the dead, which I believe the raised from the dead thing. I still, I still believe in that because yeah, yeah. I, 
so you know Jesus talked about miracles and he did a lot of miracles and talked about how we could do greater miracles than him that mm -hmm. was the thing I took away from Christianity was if all of y'all really believe in Jesus and you really believe that he, he wasn't a liar right mm -hmm. he never said and he he said we can do greater miracles than him but none of you are doing these miracles <laughs> yeah none of you are even trying to do what he did in fact the church has turned into the the pharisees you know it's mm -hmm. like i don't even know if that's the right word anymore it's been so long since that word's come out of my mouth you know over yeah, a decade. yeah but just i i just saw how the people that were like worshiping jesus which he didn't even want to be worshiped by the way <laughs> like, that was not his idea <laughs> like, yeah but the people that were you know it's all just got so twisted and convoluted but as far as as I think it's interesting how so many people who leave religion end up pursuing the true connection with our with source energy right like I feel like that's kind of what keeps a lot of us in the church is because we're like, well, I really, I feel something here. Mm -hmm. I feel something. Because like you said, there is elements of truth in every religion. There's aspects and elements of truth, right? So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just, I think it's interesting. It's in, And you're technically, you're a millennial, right? I'm a millennial. Yep. So I would, I wish we could do like a poll and find out how many millennials like left the church and now they're like spiritual and happier than ever and like yeah figured it out you know it would be so interesting and then also like the the um I know there's a lot of folks in the queer community who are now like really into astrology and crystals and all that stuff and the all the different identities and how that all like inner is interwoven because I know a lot of queer folks who are like <laughs> super super into exploring this um and i'm like hi ah, it's not all queers it's definitely not that blatant statement but it's feels like a decent amount of us <laughs> how many ex religious kids are queer like it'd be interesting to look at that too because think about how many of us left religion mostly because we, we weren't allowed to be who we are we weren't allowed to be ourselves yeah yeah for sure. And it's interesting that you mentioned that for a lot of folks feeling something within their religious upbringing and wanting to hold on to that. I actually had a weird, not a weird, but I had a different experience where I actually didn't feel anything. Mm. I didn't feel shit when I, <laughs> when I was growing up, like I, I was around people who were experiencing things and feeling like, Oh, Jesus is right here. Or God is right here. All these things. And I just was always like, what is that? Like, I just kind of like went along with it being like, okay, is nothingness what you're feeling? Cause that's what I'm feeling. Like. <laughs> and so it was almost like I went down the whole, like, I don't believe anything for a while road. Cause I was just like, well, I didn't feel anything when I was, when I was in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was like, well, that's what I believe exists then. And then it wasn't until I started kind of being introduced to more people like it started very simple it was like reiki like i knew some people who did reiki and knew some people who were into yoga so then they were talking about the chakra system it was little nuggets left like that meditation that type of thing and then it wasn't until that i explored it on my own terms in my own way then i started like i was like that's what people are talking about oh <laughs> the feel yeah. like i just yeah I think I needed that, the experience at the beginning of just um, kind of, it helped me question things a lot sooner, I think too. So I was like, what are you all on about? Like, I, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember not feeling anything as far as like the presence of the Lord. Right. <laughs> like, what is that supposed to feel like? I'm yeah. not sure. I don't know if I'm feeling anything. Yeah. <laughs> Like I'd be at home and I'd like put on my Christian music and I'd be like, God, I just want to feel you. Like, what, what, what do you feel like? I, 
Were you were you a Barlow girl? Oh God, that sounds that's a band, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> that sounds familiar. I probably know some of the songs. Yeah. Yep. DC Talk and all of that. Yeah, DC Talk. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was really, I got really caught up in the whole, um, what's that Australian church, the big one that does all the music, Hillsong, oh. Hillsong. Yes. I yep. got, I was like, I, I actually got accepted to go to their Bible college thing. No way. Yeah, and I was about to go, and then like the week or two before, I, it was like a month or two before I would have had to leave. I didn't have enough money saved up, and I... I think I was just, I don't know, I, something in me decide, told me, I just decided to do this internship at my church instead, which was right down the street from my house. Yeah. And it was like, so it was easier. And, um, your higher self is like, hell no, make it so hard for them to get there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Block it, block it. Yes, yes, yes. Because I didn't necessarily feel God's presence or know what that was, but I felt connected. I felt like I was part of a community. I felt like I was part of something bigger than myself, but I was also not appreciated and like, you know, like yeah. overworked and like, I didn't see those things though. I just knew that if I left the church, I would be completely alone. Mm. I knew I would have no friends. I had no yeah. friends outside of the church. I didn't know anybody outside of the church. Like that's their whole thing is mm. they discourage you from having like non-Christian friends. And even if they don't actually say that, other you get the looks the judgmental looks people right. are like skeezed out that you're hanging out with smokers and things like, like just like really just toxic environment um I ended up getting kicked out of the church when I was 21 because I um I went out drinking that weekend on my 21st birthday with a couple different groups of friends you know a different group each night yeah and someone I don't know, somebody reported back to the pastors that I was out drinking. Oh, and someone from high school put the, um, our picture on Facebook of like sh holding shot glasses. Good old Facebook. I know, right? Facebook. And I knew, I knew that it wasn't a good idea to have it on social media, but I didn't know this person posted those photos. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was all in my favor in the end, right? But um, yeah. I was so mad and I was just like, how could you do that? That was so careless. But the thing is, is I am so grateful. Like I am so, I, I wouldn't have left the church willingly because I was determined to save. The <laughs> I thought that I could like show people the real way, like from within the church and be like, and, and convince them that like, they were just reading it wrong. Yeah. I don't know. I had a lot of faith in myself. Let's just put it that yeah. way. <laughs> You're on a mission. You're like, let's go. I'm going to do this. Right. Right. Cause like Whit and I have talked about this off camera as well, that we both had that feeling of like wanting, feeling like we were going to do something big or yeah. do something really important with our lives. Um, and so it was hard to leave the church because I didn't see how I could do that with out the church I thought that it had right. to be together um but anyway so all that to say this is a very safe space for anyone who is um maybe from a religious background um or anyone in the queer community this is a safe place for all those things um as far as paranormal stuff so when it comes to like um ETs like did you always believe in that or when did you really know like holy moly like the this is like real for real yeah so this this is a great question I was always as a kid obsessed with space I was the kid doing the the um all the like uh my science projects on different planets I had tons of different planet books. Like I would ask for them for my birthday and stuff. I was like that nerdy kid that was like, I had a telescope. Like I just was so into it and drawn to that. I thought I was going to be an astronaut for the longest time. Just convinced. Um, 
so that that passion was there from a young age and then I kind of went sideways where I was like oh I don't know if I'm that like into science like in high school and so I took some like harder more challenging science classes I'm like I don't know if this is really my thing um but it wasn't until gosh maybe a couple of years ago honestly that I when I started kind of exploring different spiritual aspects, one of the first things that I actually jumped into was star seeds, which typically when people jump in, it's like tarot or, you know what I mean? Like people kind of have like the, the stories I've heard from people I know, at least I'm not alone in probably my jumping in point, but from what I hear from a lot of my friends is like, oh, I started with tarot or I started kind of like looking at astrology and like all that stuff. And I'm just like, star seeds, let's go. Like just immediately, like ah. I had someone, um, not Crystal, who you've also seen on this uh, YouTube channel, not Crystal, but a different person do like a star seed, uh, a mini kind of star seed reading for me, and um, and I I just had like seen her videos and I was drawn to her immediately and what she was saying and I was like, yeah. Ah, that rings true for me. I believe that. And so once I started kind of going down the path of star seeds, I'm like, well, I, you know, just connect the dots of like, if we're, we're originating from other places and our soul and energy is like been all over the place, then of course that is out there right now. Like that's not a huge leap to make. So, um, so yeah, it all just kind of happened at once where I was like, of course. And then, um, then I started looking into like, the whole like Dr. Greer's stuff. Like I've watched his documentaries on C5 contact and went to a few actually C5 things just to see what would happen. Um, and people, if you're not familiar with those, it's kind of like you're getting a group into a meditative state and basically putting your intention for contact to happen. And during those, during those sessions, I personally didn't like witness anything um, or sense anything but it was just kind of cool to be in community with people who were exploring that. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, as I kind of jumped more and more into my spiritual experience and then had that like soul origin report done by Crystal, that's who I was mentioning and like all these other things. And then I had a few readings done by Ray and Ray's like, yes, this energy is coming through for you. And I was like, oh my gosh, all these things. Then I started, then I had an experience in my, that same bedroom that same bedroom with my two guides that were up in that corner, I saw, and this was me as I was going to bed. So I was like kind of in that groggy state where I hadn't even turned off my light yet. I was still kind of getting situated, still kind of fluffing my pillows, doing that whole thing. And I saw like a version of myself. I knew it was me, like kind of me, my light body, something like cupping the face of an ET, like right next to my bed, like standing right next to my bed. And it was like, definitely a gesture of like, I know you, I love you. I care about you. And it was like an exchange. And I was like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> but then, and I don't know if people who've experienced this type of thing have, have this type of thought. I was just like, wow, I wrote it down and I went to bed what wouldn't you be awake for the next like 10 hours like thinking about that no i don't even know i've never <laughs> seen anything like that so i have no idea like <laughs> it, it almost felt i mean the again the 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 experience that i had was it was very love filled it was very comforting there was nothing about it that was scary the et themselves looked kind of more bluish um and it wasn't like super, super solid. It was kind of like a light, kind of fuzzy almost. Like they weren't physically, physically there. It was kind of like they were projecting something for me to see or something. Um, but I was like, whoa. And yeah, just decided to go to bed after that. Um, how I slept after that, I don't know, but I did. And, uh, but it was super, it was, yeah, it was so like heart filled, a heart filled experience. So I didn't need to see that to believe in ETs, but it was just an extra confirmation. Like, yep, they exist. And also I'm connected to them. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is so cool. That is so cool. 
Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if I have a, you know, this is funny because I'm asking you like a specific moment in time, you know, I don't even necessarily believe in that for every situation. Like for example, in the church days, they'd be like, well, when, when were you saved? When oh, you saved? yep. I remember that question. I'm and like, I, I always like, was like, uh, I've always been saved. I always said that I've always been saved since I was a kid. I don't know. I just always have been. And they told me that was not a correct answer it was the wrong answer yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um when it comes to my i don't know i like I, I have a similar answer for this though i never thought about aliens really but like i always knew they were real when i saw stuff about them but i wasn't afraid i was never like i always thought it was silly that the way that they portray aliens and, and i and i and I, a lot of the times even as a kid i would laugh like and the thing is, is that wasn't a topic we ever talked about in my house, sure. but it was my own internal knowing. And if I ever saw anything with aliens, you know, I would know uh, that it was real, but, but yeah, I just think it's interesting how the knowing, you know, Whit and I both share that, that gift. And I, we've both had it from a young age, just that knowing, you know, you, you don't talk about it. It's not like it ever comes up in conversation, but if someone were to ask you, do you think aliens are real? You'd be like, yeah. Yep. And it would sound like you were very confident, like you knew exactly, you know, and I'm, it's interesting. I wonder if you have a similar experience where people just think you're like in a leadership position, kind of wherever you go, because yes. you, when you have the, that knowing about so many things, it's like people can sense that they can see that, you know? Yes. A hundred percent. I even like still in college being put in leadership positions, leading people older than me, that typically wouldn't happen, but I like fast tracked in the certain positions and different internships and things that I held because I was like functioning from this, like knowing in me and leading from this. I mean, I think it was knowing and also like past lives of being a leader. Like I was pulling on all these things. I didn't know that I was, <laughs> I didn't know I was doing these things, but I definitely now recognize, oh, that's where all that was coming from. Um, it's all within me and I'm pulling from different aspects of myself. Um, but yeah, that clear cognizance or however want they want, you want to describe it of that clear knowing has always been super, super strong. And people, people see that as like, a a very, very strong leadership, even if they don't know, you know, even if they don't have an understanding of what that clear knowing is. They're like, there's something in you that I trust because you're just like functioning from this space yeah. of like confidence and like, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's been great in so many ways. It's also like led me down paths where I, again, like moving across the country without, without having anything lined up, like people, my parents, my family, my friends were like, you are nuts. What are you doing? And I'm just like, it's going to work out it's going to be fine. And it's always been fine, but yeah. You're, it's so funny having you on my channel. You're one of the first people I've interviewed on here. That's so much like myself. Like I'm that person too, where everyone's like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, did you think about this at all? I'm like, I don't even think about it. It feels <laughs> right. It just feels right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I've, I've found over, over the course, cause I'm 36 now I have found over the course of my life, that I, I go with what I feel is right and in flow for me. And then I also do have, I do try to have a few things kind of worked out if it feels right. So I don't mm -hmm. try to force to, I don't try to force the details, but if I can like figure out like, okay, this is, I'm feeling this area is probably a good place to land, or this is the apartment that I'll end up in or whatever, you know, I'll try to figure out a few more details than I would in my past, <laughs> but right. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, I, I jumped into my business six months in not a hundred percent having everything fleshed out, like, cause that's pretty quick to just jump in. But I, again, had this clear, very strong knowing this is going to be fine. This is exactly what I'm meant to be doing right now. And I just jumped I went from, you know, having the 401k benefit, the, you know, all of the healthcare, all of that stuff you're working for yourself and you don't have any of those things <laughs> but just being like nah this is good this is good. and everyone's like what the heck are you doing 
Yeah. 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 Such a, a like powerful testimony of just trusting, trusting that the universe is looking out for you. That mm-hmm. if you take a risk, you're going to be caught, you know, yes. you're gonna be caught with love. Yeah. Um, it's not without challenging moments, right? I've definitely had plenty where I was like, oh gosh, like the, the, the fight or flight is in me a little bit. And I'm like, oh gosh, is this actually going to be okay? Like I experienced something and I'm like, uh, um, but it always ends up okay. It always has. Um, so just leaping into it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's, it's another thing I want to go back to that we were talking about earlier is how, when you started your business, you were still working at your other job. You started the thing that you wanted to do. But the thing is, is your whole mindset of what can I do? And this is going to be kind of my own paraphrasing, but what can I do that's, that's easy for me that I already do anyway, something I already do naturally that I want to keep that a part of my life. For example, it can be something as small as like, I love to cook and I really want cooking to just be part of my everyday experience. I just get to cook. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, it was talking, you know, um, I know that I talk a lot and I get, um, I've gotten in trouble over the years by in in different ways for talking too much or whatever. So I was in a similar mindset as, uh, as similar timeline to COVID, you know, happened. Oh my God, stop texting me. (laughs) (laughs) It's my one friend. They're just blowing me up. They're like, do you know how amazing you are? I'm like, (laughs) yes, but (laughs) I do know, but I'm busy. (laughs) (laughs) that's so funny um so yeah just like COVID happened I was receiving unemployment I was on a leave of absence when COVID happened uh but right before they laid they like laid me off like on my leave of absence they laid me off and they're like here we'll give you like one month's pay and yeah be on your way. And I'm just like, oh, wow, cool. Great. Um, so, <laughs> and then, you know, COVID happened and I was like, well, there's no way I'm going to get a job now. Like, <laughs> like that's not an option. Um, so I kind of didn't make a pact with the universe, but it kind of felt like that. I was like, all right, universe, I know for a fact that I am never going back to retail. I know that. I know that I'm never stepping foot into another mall again. Mm-hmm. as far as working there and I was like okay so I did the whole thing where I was making a list of like well what do I like to do like if I didn't have to work and I could just do whatever I wanted like what would that be mm-hmm. and so you know it's like reading writing talking watching movies like just things that I'm like okay how can I do you know so you know I feel like I'm rambling but all of that led to doing what I'm doing now. Yep. Creating a YouTube and just talking with people that have similar interests and putting it on YouTube. I mean, that might not seem like a job, but it's part of my job, right? It's part of, um, job as in what even is a job? I mean, you know, Mm -hmm. if we're making it up for ourselves, if we're making the rules up for ourselves, for our own life, then anything can be part of your job. Um, So yeah, I just, I hope anyone watching this is feeling inspired because that's the whole goal here is that you feel inspired that you have what it takes to start your own business, whatever that looks like. You have what it takes. You have skills and resources that you're probably not even thinking about right now that would perfectly set you up to do what's easy for you. And maybe this, what we're doing now, talking and being in front of, that sounds to you like really, really hard then that this is obviously not for you. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like maybe for you, it's hanging out with kids and making art all day. You know, maybe mm-hmm. that for you is, you know, and there's a way you could definitely receive an energy exchange if that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I feel like it's the end of that long, that long thought. (laughs) I dig it. I dig it. That's uh, right up my alley of what I'm about. Like I'm all about my main, if I'm going to put any sort of label on what my purpose is, which I think is like ever evolving, it comes back to enthusiastically empowering others 
Like that's what it comes back to over and over and over again. And what I love doing so, so much. Like I get so much joy on seeing people get sparked and they're all of a sudden they have this confidence or like they believe in themselves or they're building something or they started a project or they, or they just change their mindset into something that's making their life better and more joyous for themselves. Like all of that brings me so much joy. And so that's why I've made the moves that I have. And, and I think what's interesting is people are like, well, I'm a healer, but there's so many like healers out there. I'm, I'm an artist and there's so many artists out there, but there is only your perspective. Like you are in this body, having this very unique perspective, uh, during this lifetime. And so the way you do healing and the way you do art is going to be very unique for you. And then the people you spark and you touch, are they going to be sparked differently than if they were to go to a different healer or a different artist? So that's what I like to tell people a lot too, is like, there are never enough of all of this. Like just keep, keep creating more because it's, that's what we're meant to be doing is creating. Yeah. And ultimately isn't kind of everything we do so that we can feel good. Like everything we do is because we want to feel good no matter what it is. It's because we just want to feel good. We want to be happy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if we can just skip straight to the happy, then everything else will fill in, you know, all the little blanks in between will fill in. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, I had one more thought. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. About just how all we're doing is in an attempt to feel joy. So if we can, oh, I lost the freaking thought. It was the reverse of that thought. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Maybe it jumped out of your head for a reason. I mean, or it, was, it, was, it was tying it back to like stepping into play mode and mm. joy and play. And like, if we can be joy, if, if we have the option of being able to actually be joyful all day and have fun all day, then why wouldn't we choose that? Like, why would we choose something where it's like, okay, well, half my day is really shitty because I hate this part of my job, but then I like this part. It's like, why we have the opportunity, the ability to create something where our whole day is filled with joy. Of course, there are moments where we're, you know, focused on something serious or where there's a little roadblock and we're like, hmm, how are we going to, what are we going to do about this? But it doesn't mean that like we have to sit there and endure things that are really sucking our soul dry Mm -hmm. just because there's a little bit of joy in the afternoon. You know what I mean? Like that's not enough. That that's, that's not a fulfilling, rewarding life. And we all deserve we all came here with our birthright to have a fulfilling, joyful, happy life. Mm-hmm. We all have that right. And one other thing I want to say about taking the leap. So when I started my business, I had no form of income. <clears throat> I had just moved down to California. I, I was working with Instacart, made a bunch of money, moved back down to California. We don't need to go into the, how I got there. The point is, is that <laughs> as soon as I moved into my new apartment, within two or three months from that, my car was no longer mine. mine. And so I had no form of transportation. Uh, so no way to make money the way I was making money. And that's what forced me to be like, the, but, but here's the thing met other times that type of situation has happened to me where I was oh no how am I going to pay my rent maybe I should think about but in those situations I would have just taken the path of like oh I guess I'll just move out this is too expensive I'll find somewhere cheaper and I'll make do or get by right but I was in the state of no I refuse I am an abundance mindset if the universe gave me this apartment they're gonna help me keep this apartment I love this place I love I'm one block from the beach you know that's where I was living in Long Beach Mm -hmm. so taking the leap can look differently in different situations for me not looking for another job was part of taking the, the leap like not allowing myself to shift my, because when we split our focus, it's like, well, I'm kind of focused on making this business, but I'm also my keeping the back door open. Then the energy that's going towards manifesting your dream is, is being siphoned off into this back door. Mm-hmm. So 
I actively chose no back doors. And you know how scary that is? Like, you know, but does everyone watching, do you know how <laughs> scary that is to have no plan B, no safety yeah. net? Yeah, no security blanket, yeah. No security, I'm a single person, no income, and I'm just gonna start posting on TikTok. I mean, it's just so crazy the things we can accomplish when we just trust that that little knowing, that little voice that's like, hey, don't look for a job. I don't care if you don't have money and you don't know how you're going to eat next week. Don't look for a job. Build your website. Don't look for a job. Make a TikTok video. Like what? Like <laughs> it sounds so absurd. Like your logical brain is telling you like this can't be right. But we have to learn to trust. We just have to trust, 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 trust. And those tiny little trusting steps that we take, eventually we look back and we're like, holy moly, I can't believe I was there and now I'm here. Right, right. Yeah, it's, you just never know too, like the the people that you meet along the way too. Um, even the people that you like least suspect might really, really be a part of the path to, that you're on um because there's been people that I've had a co conversation with that all of a sudden they're sending me a new client and all of a sudden I'm like what like <laughs> like I just thought we were just having a casual chat in a cafe and and now I have this new client that is amazing like so it just um you just never know you just never know where those things are going to pop up or happen so being open to that is a huge part for me is just like I'm not purposely like looking for it or like trying to make, you know, I'm not selling myself constantly. That's not really how I function in the world, but I'm open to the possibilities that are around me um, enough that if that were to happen, I will gladly allow and accept it in. So. Yeah. Letting go of timing too. We talked about this briefly, but letting like, for example, if you're at a coffee shop and you're like, Oh, I was planning on leaving at three. So I'm going to leave right at three. Well, if you're there and it's like three Oh one, don't, don't like scramble up and like, oh, I gotta go. And like, it's like, oh, it's chill. Like, obviously, if you're not aware of the time and just chill, like the universe wanted you to be there for a few more minutes longer. Who knows why? Maybe it was traffic, maybe it was whatever. But don't, I feel like we need to let go of being so worried about being on time for everything. And like, yep. I, I made this commitment to do it for exactly this long. And yeah, you made the commitment, but now it feels like you need to shift that a little bit, communicate about it you know don't yep. do things out of obligation you know that's an yes. icky, icky feeling in the belly of that has things. been a huge thing for me to unlearn is the like strictness of a calendar because it for the longest time that I mean I touted myself as like I'm so efficient I get things done so quickly because I'm blah, 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 I'm always on time blah. and there are parts of me that that comes out a little bit right still but I've allowed myself for the past couple of years to see my calendar more as like a suggestion. Like mm -hmm. this is just like a suggested time frame of how my day could look. And when I look at it and I see I have a meeting coming up with somebody and it's typically the people that are a similar mindset of me. Like we're supposed to have this, uh, this taping of this YouTube thing right now. Like there's been moments where like, you know what? This doesn't actually feel like the right time for this. Let's wait a couple of days and see how we're energetically like feeling. How is this all feeling? And honestly, like we wouldn't have had this conversation if we tried to force it last week. Mm -hmm. So allowing for those things like has been so helpful for me. And I'm not a bad, I'm not less productive. I'm not a bad person just because I'm not forcing my way to like have this meeting at this same time. And this is what we're going to accomplish. It's like, what if we went off on 10 different tangents? But those tangents sparked people in amazing ways that we might never hear about. But the fact that we went off and did that, right. I don't know, just allowing it all, allowing allowing in so many different ways um, has been so, so helpful for me. So the, the rigidity is like, I've released the rigidity so I can just sink into it more, sink into life a little bit more. <laughs> totally this has been a great conversation like and you're right we would not have had this exact conversation it would have been a completely different conversation if we would have done it then yeah I mean, of course it still would have had value but the energy of the conversation would have been different right mm -hmm. um 
So, wow, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I am so enjoying getting to know you. And for everyone watching, I'm sure you're going to see more of wit here on my channel. Um, we also are working on a group project with Crystal. So if you haven't seen any of those videos yet, go check out the videos of the three of us yeah. um, for our new workshop, Play With Purpose. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put Wit's uh, link tree and like website in the description. So if anyone wants to get in touch with Wit, you can. Cool. Yeah. Any final oh. thoughts? No, just, I mean, just that I'm like super grateful that you wanted to have this conversation and it's so funny, like I was just saying, like we went in kind of thinking, oh, we'll touch on this, touch on this. And then we just both allowed it to go in so many different directions. So I'm just grateful that both of us were open to that. And it was fun. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Super fun chat. Yes. All right. Well, until next time, y'all. Peace out. <laughs>